Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Brad Hamilton and today I'm going to show you how we can add an interactive smoke and particle explosion to this car scene like shown in the example. You can use this technique to create scenes where your simulations need to be more dynamic inside of their environment. Anyways, let's get started. So here is our original starting animation here without the explosion and what we want to do here is choose a frame where we want the explosion to start and then we want to click our 3D cursor where we want to add our explosion. So I'll just click in front of our car here, like so. Now we'll go on the left to our chaos tab here, and I'm going to select the dynamic smoke fire, the glass particles, and the burning debris checkboxes. Then we'll go down to the particle parameters and adjust a few settings. We will scale the particle amount by 10, the particle life by two, and we'll put the particle start size at 1.5 and the particle end size at 0.5. The fuel start amount we will put at 10, and the end amount we will change to 5. Finally, we'll have the initial starting velocity at 0.7, and the end velocity at 0.25. And now we'll just scroll up to the operators here and click on Omnidirectional Burst. And now as you can see, our selected particle systems with their parameters have been added here by our cursor, as well as a custom domain cube for the smoke. Let's go ahead and select our domain cube. Press M and move it down a layer so we don't bake any of the smoke as we tweak our particles. We will select all of our particle systems here and bring it up above our road. If we go to right view here and play through our animation, we get something like this. As you can see right now our particles aren't interacting with the road or the car, so what we need to do is actually make those objects have collision properties. Before we do that however, let's tweak a few of the particle settings in our particle systems here. So while our smoke fire particle systems is selected, we will go to our particle panel and we'll go to our emission tab here and just increase the lifetime of these particles to 12 for a slightly larger explosion. And now we'll select our glass particle system and under its particle tab, we will increase the number of particles to 10,000. And under its velocity tab, we will increase the normal velocity to around 60 for a more violent and larger debris field. Okay, so now let's make our road and car interact with our particle systems. So let's select the road here and then go to the physics tab and enable the collision physics here. Then we will enable the smoke physics as well and change it to a smoke collision object in static mode. Now, as you can see, our particles are interacting with our road. Let's do the same for our car here. Go ahead and select the car and then enable collision physics and make it a smoke collision object, but change the collision type to animated. Now if we go to side view here, as we play through the animation, you can see that the particles and debris are interacting with both the road as well as the car passing through them. Now let's go to our second layer here and select our domain cube. Press M to move it back to the first layer and now we will just position our domain cube around our explosion particles while leaving room for the car to drag some of the smoke as it drives past the explosion. Something like this should work. Go to the physics panel with the smoke domain selected and change the border collisions to all so that the smoke interacts with the boundaries of our domain cube. We will deselect the smoke high resolution option for our first test bake as that will increase the baking time drastically. And then we will increase the divisions to around 350 because we scaled up the domain cube quite a bit. Let's scroll down to our smoke cache here. And if your smoke cache is grayed out, then be sure to save your project and it should appear fine after that. We will change the end frame for our simulation to 260 because that's when our animation ends and then click on bake all dynamics and then give some time for our computer to simulate. Okay, so now we are back and we have a pretty cool looking result here. As I've said before, one of the best ways to preview our explosion in real time is using our OpenGL render preview option here. So let's do that. Then just click on render and play animation and we can see our explosion in real time. It's looking pretty cool, so let's get to our explosion domain material. We will go to our render tab here. We'll drop the samples to 10 for now, and I recommend that your seed stopwatch is selected and that you have put your clamp direct and clamp indirect to around three. Under geometry, I will put my step size to 0.01 and max steps to 260. And under light paths, under volume bounces, I recommend putting that between four and eight. Finally, under the scene tab in color management, make sure that the view is filmic the look is none, and the color space is filmic log. This is so you can get maximum dynamic range for your material renders. Now let's open up a window here to play with our smoke domain node material settings. We'll open up the node editor on this side and switch to rendered mode on the left panel. This right side is where we can change how the smoke looks. I'm going to drop the smoke density to 100 and decrease the flame value to 400. 
and I'll change the contrast of the smoke to one, and then we'll change the density of the smoke again to 65. This may take some experimentation to get different results, but I'll go with this for now. Once we add some glow to the simulation and compositing, this should look pretty awesome. Now I'll adjust my cable cam camera pan and tilt here and keyframe it to view more of the explosion as the car passes through and then boost the resolution on the camera tab to 100% and go to render, render image and do a test render. So we have a pretty nice looking low resolution explosion render here. Now let's bake the same simulation with higher resolution for a more realistic and detailed result. Before we do this final bake, we will add a turbulence field to break up the smoke and fire a bit more. So we'll press shift A and add a turbulence field. Then we will animate this turbulence field's position to move upwards on the Z axis over time using two keyframes. Now while the turbulence field is selected, we'll go to the physics panel here and keyframe the strength of the field over time. So during the beginning of the explosion, we will keyframe the strength value at 250 by pressing I while our cursor is over the strength value. And then we will go near the middle of our explosion and bring the strength down to six and add another keyframe. Now select the smoke domain and select the high resolution box. We'll go ahead and free the bake here and then change the strength of our noise to 1.5. Then, once again, save your project one more time and press Bake All Dynamics and give your computer some more time to bake this higher resolution version of your simulation. This can take some time, so you may want to take a break at this point. Okay, so now that we've baked our high resolution version of our simulation, let's do one last render preview here. It's looking nice, so now we will render our animation. On our render tab, I'll make sure our resolution is at 100% and I'll boost our samples to around 50 for the smoke. Under output, select the folder where you want your animation saved. I will use the OpenEXR file format for this high dynamic range animation and then click on render, render animation. And after rendering and compositing with glow and glare, I have something like this. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions, and I'll see you guys next time.